What's up guys, Arden here again with Yellow House Aerial and today we are talking about the Laowa 9mm f2.8 0D for DL mount, which is the DJI X7 camera. I paid full price, I paid $694.23 Canadian for this plus a $16 collect on delivery fee. Uh, if you're looking to pick this lens up, I will put a link below in the description. Okay, so if you're familiar with Laowa's 7.5 millimeter micro four thirds lens for the X5S, this is really, really similar to that. This is the first non DJI DL mount lens because DJI invented their own mount for the X7. This is the first lens by any company other than DJI that fits on the X7, which is pretty fantastic. Um, so far, they're the only people to do it and the only people that I imagine might be doing it for a while. Um, but it's really awesome to finally have some options. This lens is half the price-ish, or maybe even less than the DJI DL mount lenses coming in at about $500 US, whereas those ones are like 1,000 to 1,200. Um, so it's really cool to have other options and some that are cheaper as well. Okay, so it only comes in black, unlike the 7.5 millimeter, which comes in silver as well. And it's a blue ring standard weight version, but given how back heavy it is, I don't really think an aerial lightweight version would do much good. So to go over the lens a little bit, like I said, super similar to the 7.5 millimeter, you'll probably be leaving the focus, which has a nice smooth feel here at infinity. The hard stop I find to be the sharpest. Uh, the aperture blade ring here is smooth, easy to use, no problems, no complaints. The caps that come with it are quite nice. Um, it is a metal hood that comes with it, comes right off, just a, a bayonet mount there. Overall, no surprises, nothing that we didn't see coming from my video late last year. So unfortunately, this is a 49 millimeter thread, just like I mentioned in my video late last year. It is a bigger thread than the ones that are on the DJI DL mount lenses and most X5S lenses. So you will need a new set of filters if you have ND filters or polarizers, they will not fit on here. And if you put a step up to make 46 fit to 49, you will likely see them in the edge of the frame because this thing is so wide. If you wanna be able to keep the X7 at a native ISO of 400, you'll probably want to have at least a 1.5 or I find probably more likely a 1.2 and a 1.8 ND allowing you to shoot in high day and not have to stop this thing down to f11. So here's a comparison of the DJI 16 millimeter and now the Laowa 9 millimeter. Just a crazy difference. It's absolutely nuts how wide this thing gets. Forget any upward looking shots as well, you need to tilt at least about 10 degrees below horizon just to have a clear 360 degree pan on the Inspire 2. This lens is so wide it can almost see its own damper plate which sits just above the camera mount. If you want to have any kind of sky in the shot or if you want to have a 50-50 uh, above and below horizon, your pilot will need to make sure that they are facing the same way that the camera is facing, otherwise you will almost assuredly have some landing gear poking into the top of your shot. So here's another set of frames. Here's the Micro Four Thirds 7.5mm from Laowa on the X5S. Now up to the X7, here's DJI's 16mm DL, previously the widest lens available for the X7. And then, boom! The 9mm on the X7 just blows them out of the water. This thing is so wide. So it is still full manual, just like we expected and just like the Laowa 7.5mm. Set it and forget it for the most part, aside from your exposure. You might have to play with your shutter speed or your EI just a little bit while it's in the air because you won't be able to change your aperture to modify your exposure. So you better think ahead if you're going to put an ND on. If your sun is setting, you might want to take that ND off and just expose a little bit bright so that while you're flying, when the sun sets there, you're still properly exposed and you don't have to bring that drone home, land it, change the exposure, and then put it back up in the air, and that's wasting time. So there is some respectable vignetting that I saw in some of the shots, depending on the filter used and what your aperture's at. After initial tests, I was worried that the vignetting would be overwhelming when used with an ND, but after using it on a shoot, my concerns were quelled. It really looks great. Better yet, here's a shot at f2.8, and then this was shot at f8. The vignette is gone almost completely. Also, let's take a look at the center sharpness here with the f2.8 on the left and f8 on the right. And then here's the edge sharpness. Some cameras and lenses have built-in ND filters like the DJI 16mm DL mount lens. Having the ND filter inside of there helps keep it clean. Instead of taking the filters off and putting them in the case, they might get dusty. It also helps eliminate the likelihood of vignetting as a result of filter rings, putting more filters onto the front. You have less parts to worry about. And in the case of the Inspire 2, you can actually enable this ND filter remotely from the Go4 app and you don't have to bring the drone home and land it and change that filter and then put it back up in the air again. You can just put the ND on and off, which is really slick. And I kind of wish they would have put this into all of their DL lenses. 
So speaking of ND filters, here's the Laowa 9mm without an ND, and here it is with an ND 1.5. Honestly, there's no noticeable difference. It's totally not what I expected. I was thinking maybe with such a wide lens, looking through a filter like that, like looking through a polarizer on an ultra wide, might give you some funny effects or increasing vignetting. But honestly, this comparison shows that there's no difference in having an ND on the front versus not. Another benefit of stopping this lens down is it helps to tackle an issue that I encountered called curvature of field. This isn't new, it happens on different lenses. And what it means is that the focal plane of the lens is not perfectly flat. So when the image is projected onto the sensor, it's not flat, it's curved really. And in this case's lens, it actually curves away from the viewer, away from the camera. So let's say you have a subject, maybe you're focused at a meter, the curvature of field means typically you would expect something that's a meter and a meter to be both sharp but something that's here is sharp, and then on this lens, you could maybe have something that's 1.2 meters, but on the edge of the frame, and it would actually also be sharp because that curvature field um, of the focal plane is there. So now this means if you're shooting wide open, let's say you're focused at infinity, the center of the image could actually be sharp, but the edges of the image are focusing past infinity, so they'll actually be a little bit soft. Stopping down to f8, like we did to eliminate the vignette, will also take care of this issue, giving you overall better sharpness in the entire image. When you're shooting with this lens on the Inspire 2, you're almost certainly going to be focused to infinity, so definitely plus two points, both the vignette and the curvature of field for stopping down to f5.6, or maybe even tighter, if the amount of light permits. The only time you should need to shoot wide open with this lens uh, 2.8 is probably during a sunrise or sunset, or maybe maybe just a dark kind of indoor situation. One thing I noticed, this lens doesn't really have the satisfying click when you put it onto the X7. It does lock, but the noise is not as clear. The DJI lenses have a very familiar click when you mount them to the X7. If we pop this lens off, you can actually see that it does fit into the X7 lens set case. You can just put it in there. If you're using one of these lenses in there on the camera, obviously you'd put a cap on there, but it fits. So you don't need to worry about another place to put that lens. Um, it'll just sit in there for the time being. As I've mentioned before, I didn't really have any problems with the lens shooting still photos, raw video, or anything in ProRes. No issues, you can just boot it up with this lens on there. You don't need to have a different lens and hot swap it. But if you boot the DJI Inspire 2 up with this lens on, it is liable to reset your settings. So you might end up somewhere like 30 frames per second cinema DNG raw, and it'll just reset, it'll obliterate your camera settings. It might even flip you into photo mode, who knows? But unfortunately that, it's just something about not having a lens profile, the Inspire 2 just wipes your camera settings. So let's talk a little bit more about the optics of this lens. Super wide lenses like this 14 to 24 millimeter for uh, Nikon SLRs are really made for getting super close to things. You can get right up in the grill, you can really show the detail and really get that kind of dynamic effect where things are close and they appear huge and everything in the background kind of becomes less important. So you'll get right up, maybe like in this shot here is one of my favorites. You get up close to something and you can just really see the detail and it really allows you to focus on the subject without throwing that background too far out of blur. It doesn't utilize bokeh, it uses more just the aspect of the lens in order to let you focus on things. Now obviously aerial systems aren't meant to get up close to things. If you could get up close, if you could just stand in front of it, go on a tripod, you probably Probably wouldn't be using a drone. So given that, having a super wide lens might not give you as many possibilities when shooting from the air as it might shooting on foot. But that said, it doesn't mean that this lens won't perform and give you something truly incredible when let loose on let's say the interior of a church, or if you're flying through a canyon, or maybe a big vista in the mountains, something like this. The sharpness is good, I would say leave it between about f4 and f8. If you go any higher than f8, that diffraction does start to come in and soften your image, but really with that super wide field of view, you're not pixel pushing it, you're just looking to see everything. So aside from bringing electronic lenses for the DL mount with a little bit more finesse and maybe some functionality, there isn't really anything else that we could expect from Laowa. They are the first ones that went through the trouble to actually reverse engineer the DL mount and put it on there. I would say going forward, I would expect DJI to re release maybe a second generation of DL mount lenses with better optics or bigger sensor coverage or uh, maybe T-stops and more light, more depth of field. Um, they went through the trouble of designing and implementing this mount, so I don't expect them to abandon it in whatever becomes successor of the X7. Maybe it's a X7S or X8 or X9 camera like that. I would say we're here for a while, and this lens is likely a good investment and will probably work on future DJI cameras, whatever those may be. 
So if you're one of those people that is maybe picking up an X7 in the near future, or maybe you only have one or two DL mount lenses, I would definitely consider picking this up. We're really happy with it. I've put a link to purchase it down in the description. Definitely let me know any questions in the comments and I will get back to you personally. My name is Arden for Yellow House Ariel. I'd like to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.